that's why I love this old engineering because everything works. They're a little different than all the rest. I quite old fashioned, wear a hat, sometimes play chess. And when I'm out, I'm looking for that vintage flame. Yes. Okay. I need to calm down. I don't want to get too carried away or excited before I actually get into this video properly. So I will maintain my calmness for the introduction. Let me take you back first of all, before I do anything, to a summer two years ago when I had the Royal Enfield press bike, the Interceptor, on test. And Royal Enfield gave me a call and it was the start of summer and they said, Freddie, do you want to come for a barbecue in the Kent countryside with a few other Royal Enfields? So I headed out into the Kent countryside. I was on the Royal Enfield Interceptor. There was a Himalayan, a Continental, and this, the classic 500. We rode out into the countryside and we pulled up into a big field. All of the bikes parked up with a barbecue spot and a Land Rover parked up. The weather was stunning. And we decided to go out and get all of the food for the barbecue. And there parked up next to the Interceptor was this, the classic 500. And I remember looking at it and I remember seeing the guy riding it and thinking this is one of the most incredible looking bikes. And the guy, Timothy, who was riding it, I remember thinking he looks so damn happy riding it. So I asked him, Timothy, do you mind if I borrow that? Do you mind if I take that out to the shops for the 10 minute ride? So there we were on the country lanes, Interceptor, Himalayan, Continental ahead of me and me at the back with this, the classic 500. And for those 10 minutes that I was whizzing around the Kent country lanes, I have never been so happy in my life and I've never had such a big smile on my face. So I want to know, was that 10 minutes of pure joy just a summer infatuation, a summer fling, or was it something deeper? Okay, the walk around. Right, they started, sorry, I almost just slipped then. They started making these bikes, the Classic 500, in 2008, and production stopped in 2020. This bike right here made, was made incredibly all the way up until 2020. So it's a 500cc, it's a single cylinder bike, it's 27 horsepower and it's 195 kilos with 90% of fuel in the tank. It's the most glorious ergonomic position, the most glorious riding position that I think I've ever experienced. It's so perfectly comfy and situated just riding along the motorway in the country lanes it is absolutely perfect the bend in my arms the way my leg bends like this it's it for me it couldn't be more perfect just as a sit up and enjoy everything around you kind of motorbike styling well it's it's classically absolutely classically as true as you could ever possibly imagine to post-war styling. There is no other motorcycle on the market or has been no other motorcycle on the market within the past two decades that stayed as true to the original post-war era styling as this bike. And not just styling, this bike itself has stayed as true mechanically to the post-war era as any other motorbike built in the past 20 years. Right, let's do it front to back. Headlamp circular headlamp but with this again i said again the classic kind of post-war styling big binnacle that's attached to the headlamp metal it's a metal mudguard big chunky indicators spoked wheels looks brilliant with a single sided disc and again for a bike of this power you don't need any more i mean they are absolutely tiny aren't they probably as simple as you can get with the brakes there great looking tank there it's just 
you know, my, my granddad, there's a picture of him. And in fact, I'll put it up here. This is a picture right here of my granddad on, we think from the best of the family knowledge, around about 1944 or something like that, on his Norton bike. And this is the closest thing I will probably in reality ever get to riding one of those. It's a bike that more than any other takes you back to, if you're around my age, probably the, the bikes that your grandparents or your granddad was riding. It really is incredibly similar with the type of shapes and the riding position of that bike. So that is my granddad on his Norton around about 1944. Back to this bike. Monica, can I test you here? I'll put you on the spot. What the hell is that? I have no idea. That is a kickstart. That's a kickstart. So I was talking to Billy, the owner's son of Easy Rider Tenerife. And by the way, if you want this bike or any other bike of this ilk, if we're looking at Royal Enfield Interceptors, Bonnevilles, Harley Davidsons, if you want the modern classic bikes and you're coming to Tenerife, well then Easy Rider Tenerife and a link in the description is your place to go. It is a playground for bikers. Their selection of bikes off the scale. And this is one of them. So this, Shall I embarrass myself now? Okay. okay, Monica, step back a bit and I will try and do it. I was talking to Billy, the owner's son, like, why is there a kickstand? There hasn't been a kickstand on any, on any new bike. Must be for about 30 years or so. And, and Billy said the reason they've got these is in case if you're out in the middle of nowhere, for example, exploring the Indian countryside and the battery dies, well, then this is a brilliant backup. This basically means that you can start the bike if the battery dies. So, let me see if I can do it. Right, ignition on. I'll be completely honest. Billy was showing me how to do this and it took about 15 minutes of him showing me how to do it for me to actually be able to do it. Right, the bike is in neutral. No clutch, nothing. And it's just a very confident push. Very confident. That's so simple. That's why I love this old engineering because everything works. How good is that? Brilliant. It's brilliant. Okay, so that's a kickstand. Uh, let's carry on. This, you can put a passenger seat on, but this only has the single one. It's got these springs on the seat. Sorry if you see the camera going like this and that because there's a wasp attacking yeah. Monica and she's desperately trying to stay stable. It's got springs on the seat, look at that. This is incredibly comfortable, this seat. And then you've got the metal rear mud guard. They've put these great looking panniers on either side, real kind of army style panniers with just a very simple utilitarian rear instrument binnacle, twin shocks on either side. And I'll show you this, Monica, if you pan over to this, this is all that you get as a rider. You get the mileometer, number of miles you've actually done, a light for fuel, but no actual gauge to tell you how much is left, and an engine warning light, and a few lights for neutral. You get nothing else at all. Forget about any type of rider aids or anything else like that at all. It does not get more basic than this bike completely forgot to mention also has a manual choke so you've got to navigate a manual choke a kickstart absolutely no electronic or ride aids other than what is the bare minimum safety standards i think maybe it's got abs but even that i'm not sure about so this is as basic a bike as you can possibly get this is not a modern classic this is a proper old school bike that royal enfield just forgot to stop selling
I have never felt so alive on any bike as I do right now when riding this bike. Because every single second that I'm on this bike, it's an intense experience that takes over everything. When you're going over 60 miles an hour on the motorway, the vibrations penetrating your whole body get so intense that it's all you can think about. The thud of that engine, it's an addictive thing just listened, listening to it throbbing away. When you hit the sweet spot, 50 miles an hour in the country lanes with that engine ticking over, the handling absolutely perfect when you're on the back roads. Forget about the motorways with this because any more than 15 minutes and you feel bits of your body shaking off that you didn't know was possible. But if you stick, if you stick to the side roads, you stick to 50 miles an hour, just sitting up, enjoying everything around you, I promise you, I honestly do not think it's possible to have more fun on a motorcycle. And it must be the closest thing possible to experiencing a pre or a post World War II motorbike with just enough, and I do mean just enough, of the modern day reliability and refinement. And I really do mean just enough with that. You know, bikes like these, I love them so much because they force you to recalibrate in your mind what what fun means, what the definition of fun actually is when biking. Is it the absolute most powerful motorcycle or the most refined motorcycle or is it traction control and lean assist ABS when going around X or Y or is it actually absolute back to basics with a very simple low powered engine, just something that makes you feel amazing. Uh, it's a sensory overload, this bike. You really do have to in your mind. And especially for me, I've been through all of the stages with biking where I wanted the most powerful bike. So it does take some recalibration if you consider a bike like this. But if you open your mind to a motorcycle such as this, and I'll get onto this a bit later on in the video, such as the Meteor, such as the 350 Classic, open your mind to a bike like this, then they can be some of the most glorious bits of two-wheel fun you could ever possibly imagine. And it's got an authenticity to it. For example, if you look at the Norton motorcycles, and I'm a huge fan of the way they look, they are probably, and I welcome your opinion on these, they are more garage queen motorcycles. They're extremely expensive, they are extremely impressive, but they are not your everyday bikes. The reason I like Royal Enfield so much is because they're made by Indians for Indians, and the Indians absolutely love their motorcycles, and they use these motorcycles as everyday transport. And I cannot help but feel extremely warm inside when I get on a bike like this, knowing that this is used in India across all different terrains as a proper, genuine mode of transport. With a bike like this, there are limitations. For example, motorway going over 60 miles an hour, it, it does shake a lot, meaning that after 15 minutes or so, honestly, I, I really was ready to get back onto the side roads and just enjoy it at 50 miles an hour, which is where this bike really does make perfect sense. Build quality, uh, it shows how far Royal Enfield have come in terms of build quality more than any other, other motorcycle brand in the past, even the past five years. The difference if we compare the 500 Classic right here to the Meteor is absolutely gigantic. They have come on leaps and bounds. There are a few areas here where I can tell, you know, it's been built down to a budget. Whereas with the Meteor, the 350 Meteor, it defies belief how they've managed to build that bike for £3,879. That goes beyond expectations, whereas this sits very neatly within that 
more lower end of the budget scale of motorbikes. For example, a bit of the fit and finish, um, a bit of the paintwork just on the edges, and also just a few of the materials used. You can see it's been built down to a budget. And then we get on to pricing. This was about £4,800 when new. You can get used ones, and they do hold their value incredibly well, bearing in mind they came out in 2008. Used ones, anything from 2000 to £4,400. Now, the problem for me with that is that you've now got the Meteor that's come along at £3,870 or so, and the new Classic 350, which I think is £4,300. They are now worryingly close to used versions of this bike and in my mind the difference in overall build quality, the handling, the ride quality, the fit and finish and the parts used and also funnily enough the 350 engine are all significantly better on the new variants of these bikes. The new 350cc Meteor and the classic 350. The thing that surprised me, the 350 engine I find smoother and more refined on the newer bikes, so actually they're far, far more pleasant on the motorway. When I did an hour and a half motorway journey on the Meteor, it was completely relaxing. On this, it's quite the opposite, despite the bigger engine. So, for me, if it were my money, I would, and sometimes you don't even need to spend more, I would go for the new 350 Classic or the new Meteor, and I would either take a hit and accept that I need to pay a bit more money to get one of those but it's a hundred percent worth it or if you're lucky you don't even need to pay that much more and you get the warranty and stuff so the only problem for me with this bike over the fact that it's not the greatest motorway cruiser there may be some slight issues with build quality the big problem is the huge advances that Royal Enfield have made now with the Meteor and the Classic such huge advances that I would end up trading a little bit of the character of this for the extra refinement, the build quality, the reliability of those newer models. Do you want a fun fact as to how far Royal Enfield have come in the past five years or so? Mm -hmm. In case you can't hear that, Monica nodded away. This bike is very much niche. In fact, it's so niche, it sits right at the end of the niche scale. You've got to be a character to go out and buy one of these motorcycles. And I am so grateful that there are people in the world that are characters that would go out <laughs> and buy it because it's a fantastic motorcycle that makes you feel alive. But there are other better bikes out there. However, Royal Enfield have come along so far that this motorcycle in its new guise of Meteor 350 has gone from being an incredibly niche motorcycle to in November 2021, the Royal Enfield Meteor was the UK's number one selling motorcycle. It didn't just beat the BMW GS, it also beat all of the 125cc motorcycles on the market, and that is absolutely phenomenal. Where I had sometimes played chess And when I'm out I'm looking for that vintage flame But all complexions that I adore So hard to find these seem impossible to score So I dream of To someday find that vintage love Look, this bike in modern day terms is not a good motorcycle, but it's the bike that I will remember more so than almost any other bike that I've ever ridden in my life. It's got more character, this bike, than every single other motorcycle currently on the market. By such a gigantic margin, there's no point me even discussing it. Every time, on the rare occasion that I do actually see these classic 500s on the road in the UK, the only thing that goes through my mind is that they must be the happiest motorist on the road at that specific point. This bike is pure, innocent fun. It's a childlike joy before we learn the meaning of what insecurities are. So just 
let your inhibitions get blown away in one of the most charmingly unique motorcycles I've ever had the privilege of riding. And of course, if you want to rent this very motorcycle from here in Tenerife, go and check out Easy Rider Tenerife for this bike and a whole host of other brilliant modern classic motorcycles. And there is no finer way to enjoy this glorious island than on one of these bikes. And I'm also curious, just before I finish off today, any Royal Enfield Classic 500 owners, I would love to hear from you, whether it's in Europe, the USA or India. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know. I want to know the mileage you've done on it. I want to know if it's your daily rider. I just want to know about these bikes and the type of people that own them. Thank you so much for coming on with us today. Please do give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and we'll see you in the next one.